For 20 years, Lucy Brock Broido, who runs the uh, poetry uh, at Columbia School of the Arts, would send uh, her best uh, student to Parnassus. She had a fabulous uh, success rate, a Hall of Fame, actually. Um, and one day she called and said, I have this terrific person for you. Um, his name is Max, and she described his uh, battle with, with cancer. So I, 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 I immediately sent him an email, and he uh, responded, and we set up a time to meet. He rang the doorbell, we sat and chatted for five minutes, and I immediately offered him the job. <laughs> and I uh, never regretted it. Uh, Max was an astonishing young man, irresistibly lovable, endowed with a mind that was as roomy as a galaxy, <coughs> an intellectual omnivore whose conversation ranged from neuroscience to dinosaurs to Zen Buddhism, uh, from the recital of a childhood prank that irked his teacher to his favorite poem by Louise Gluck. He also evoked intimate moments with a winning delicacy. In the year and few months he worked at Parnassus, he was a constant delight, not just for me, but for Ben and, and the other two people who were on the staff. Full of gravitas one minute and impish humor and wordplay the next. When I asked him if he'd like to write a review, he surprised me by choosing Philip Whalen as his subject. I didn't know then that um, Max was so interested in Buddhism. When Ben Downing, my co-editor, asked him to revise a paragraph or sentence that was overstuffed, he would open his laptop and immediately come up with a raft of solutions. Um, he had to do, nevertheless, a lot of revising. Um, uh, criticizing his poems did not faze him either. He listened carefully to my suggestions, usually having to do with the music of poems and rhythms, um, reflected upon them, and adopted what he thought <coughs> germane. It's not by chance that he loved improvising with his theater troupe. After a few months spending time with him, I told Max that he reminded me of Keats, that he shared the romantic poet's magnetic gift for friendship, passion for poetry, exuberant candor, and uh, ambition to excel, and also being under the threat of death. Above all, for me, he exemplified what Keats called the holiness of the heart's affection. As evident in uh, Max's bear hugs and everywhere in four reincarnations, from the book's charming dedication and poems to its fervent epilogue, a loving acknowledgement of the benign influences of family, friends, mentors, and peers. Under the most adverse circumstances, his battle against Ewing's sarcoma and endurance of chemo treatments that left him fatigued and sleepless, Mack's poetic mastery grew in astonishing quantum leaps. Max, um, uh, both in formal coherence and singularity, from eons to four reincarnations, Max possessed in abundance that rare faculty poets crave imagination. It governs the poems, startles, and gives pleasure to the reader who can reread it many times. In his poems, an astonishing last interviews, Max passed through the veil of soul making and faced the ordeal of death with a remarkable tenderness, lack of self-pity, steely wit, grace, lucidity, and courage. It was a privilege to know and love Max. We have lost a wonderful young man and a brilliant poet. 
I shall read La Pomme as your grateful blanket, which I believe is Max's final poem. Uh, it will be published in Parnassus's last issue in April of next year. Love poem as your grateful blanket for Victoria. You fell asleep wearing me like a blanket. I'd spent the day hocking blood out of my mouth, my beautiful mouth and throat like a water pump uh, forced back to life, rust currents shocking the water. I didn't realize something so thin and bloody could comfort that I offered luxuries like sleep in magic arms built for two. Love is telling me you need me even like this, because I'm like this, colon. A broth of lead and plugs of bone being boiled off earth. Love is to drink the stew, smack your lips, and tell me how hot it's to even risk dreaming surrounded by my body, which could slip more easily into that dark mind where your eyes roll. You give me the gift of a task, knowing that I can't sleep. To rub out your nightmares, to host your tremors in my body, to stitch back together into the blankie you need. This poem has a sort of it doesn't sound the least bit like John Donne, but it, it, as a love poem, it, it also has uh, a, a kind of grittiness uh, that is particularly striking. Um, thank you. <laughs>